Good afternoon, everybody. We're going to get started here in just a few seconds um, for our webinar. So first off, thank you everyone for joining us today. Um, I know the surcharging topic is is a prevalent one here um, over the last couple of years in the credit card processing world. So um, today we're going to kind of talk about everything merchants need to know about credit card surcharging. Um, so briefly, before we get into it, just um, a quick introduction for those of you that don't know much about Wind River Payments. Uh, we're family owned, based in Madison, Wisconsin here, been around for 25 years. Um, our big thing is, is being known for proactive customer service. Part of that is bringing education out to the market as well. Um, I think the credit card processing world a lot of times um, complicates things or makes things uh, makes things a little more difficult than they seem like they need to be. A lot of times there are some reasons for that, but I know there's a lot of information out there. Some of it's not always correct. So we just want to bring out the education and, and really kind of give you the, the tools and um, tips you need to make the best decision for your unique business. Um, that being said, I've been at Wind River for 11 years. I'm currently our merchant sales manager over here. Um, most of the time I've spent on the sales side. So I've talked with businesses really throughout the state, throughout the Midwest, a lot of common challenges, a lot of common questions um, that, that merchants have, no matter if they're in Hayward or Green Bay or Milwaukee or Madison or anywhere in between. So um, really want to just kind of share what we're hearing out there, um, what we know about surcharging, and then at the end, we'll open it up for questions or happy to, uh, to, to connect offline if there's questions you have on your specific business or your specific program. Um, so today we're going to cover kind of the fundamentals along with some of the common questions that we're getting around surcharging. Um, why is surcharging such a hot topic? What are the rules? What are the compliance? What does some of the enforcement look like um, for surcharging correctly? Uh, the potential benefits and potential drawbacks to surcharging and then kind of a list of things to think about um, to, to figure out is surcharging right for your business or um, could it potentially hurt business? So just starting out with what is surcharging? Surcharging is a fee that is added to the cost, to the total cost of the sale when a customer uses a credit card. And the last two words um, are intentional there. So it is only credit cards that you're able to surcharge. We'll continue to touch on that in this, on this webinar. Um, there are still a lot of businesses surcharging credit cards. There are still a lot of processors that are pushing businesses to surcharge debit cards. Um, we'll talk more about why that is not allowed and kind of some of the potential downfalls of doing that. So, you know, really, if it's a hundred dollar sale, you had a three percent surcharge. That's three dollars. The new total is one hundred and three dollars. So that is really the definition of surcharging. Um, the next question a lot of times we get is, well, is it legal for me to surcharge? Really, every state, including Wisconsin, I know most of our attendees on the webinar today are here in Wisconsin. Um, surcharging is allowed in those states. The two states where it's not allowed today are Massachusetts and Connecticut. Um, there are some states that have kind of some, some quirky little rules along with it. We know the Midwestern states very well since we deal with them um, you know, all the time. Uh, but I think that's the importance, not only what are the rules today, but I know there's some legislation out there, there's some proposals, things like that, that could potentially change what surcharging looks like in the future. Um, so again, having someone that's not only going to get you set up correctly today, but steer you in the right direction down the road if, if something does change in the industry. Uh, why do businesses surcharge? There have been uh, a lot of changes in our industry over the last couple of years. A lot of them are resulting in higher fees to the merchant and merchants are looking for ways to offset some of those costs. I know I was talking to a, a business owner a few months back, she said, we're paying 8% for our credit card processing. So we're surcharging at 5% because we're just trying to get some of that back. Well, first, an 8% net effective rate is significantly way too high. And we're seeing a lot of that overpayment in our industry. There's been a lot of mergers and acquisitions. There's been a lot of junk fees. We've done some webinars around those. But the credit card processors are really driving up some of those fees Additionally, really the preferred payment method for a lot of consumers is to use credit or debit cards. So the amount of, of um, volume going through credit and debit card has significantly increased over the last couple of years. A lot of that has to do with more card not present or you know paying a bill online or the points and rewards that a consumer gets with using a credit card. So 
Um, there's a correlation between if your fees are here and your volumes here, as that volume goes up, the total fees are going to go up in correlation with that volume. But that can become a big, a big item on, uh, on your expenses. And when you go to look for ways to lower costs, a lot of times that's why businesses are looking at surcharge as a, a way to potentially do that. Um, another question we get is, are is surcharging and cash discounting the same thing? Um, no, cash discounting is really kind of, I'd say, the, the inverse of, of surcharging. It's really offering your customers an incentive to use cash or check as opposed to use credit cards. Um, some businesses this works for, others it doesn't. Um, so it's kind of unique to your business. But I think from an optics standpoint, if you can tell your customers, hey, we will offer you a discount as opposed to, hey, we're going to charge you more. That just makes them feel better. Really, at the end of the day, it accomplishes the same thing. So that example I gave earlier of the $100 sale with a 3% surcharge being $103, cash discounting would say the, the cost is $103, but if you pay with cash or check, then it's a 3% off, you're going to pay $100. So again, it, it comes out to the same amount and... Um, it just kind of gives that customer a, a little bit more warm and fuzzy feeling as opposed to being told, hey, you need to pay us more. What is dual pricing? Dual pricing is another thing that we're starting to see a little bit in the industry um, that that it's, I think, think gas stations, right, where there is a, a, a price listed for if you pay cash, it is $3 a gallon. And that's the price that they're um, that they're showing. And then if you pay with credit card, there is a different, um, there's a different price. So it's really kind of a little bit of a hybrid between cash discounting and surcharging. There's a lot of programs that we've seen out there that are really pushing it in an incorrect way that that really takes you out of compliance. The card brands see it. If you're, if you're just advertising the cash price and not the credit card price, then really at the end of the day, that is a surcharge program. So you have to be very careful if you do go down the dual pricing model um, that you are doing it correctly or you can fall out of compliance. And we'll touch a little bit on what that means if you do fall out of compliance with the surcharging rules. Um, another hot topic or another thing when we're talking with businesses, they say, hey, we're getting all these calls for free credit card processing. Um, like most things, there, there's no such thing as free credit card processing. Um, for those of you who've attended webinars before, you've seen that that slide with the two bubbles. There are going to be fees from the card brands and there are going to be fees from the processor. Um, sure, those fees, many of them can be passed along to the consumer if you surcharge. But depending on your mix of credit and debit cards and monthly fees, a lot of times these free processing programs don't accomplish that um, and really a lot of times end up putting businesses at risk. So just kind of a marketing jargon, kind of a way to try to get your attention. But uh, like most things in life, there's nothing that's free. Um, so just something to be aware of if you're getting calls on that. Um, what about convenience fees? That's sometimes a question we get to when we start talking about some of the surcharging rules. Well, can I just add a convenience fee? Um, the rules around convenience fees vary by card type, which, which makes things a little bit more confusing. So Visa's got different rules than MasterCard and Discover and American Express. So it's a little tricky there, uh, but typically it's only allowed for a new payment channel. So example, if you're a, a business that's only been taking payments over the phone or in person, and now you're adding a pay here button online, um, you can add a convenience fee to that online payment piece. Um, but different from surcharging and cash discounting is it is a flat fee and not a percentage. So if you're a business that has a wide range of average ticket price, you know, you could buy something for $5 or $500. That flat fee um, can be can be difficult to figure out what should that be in order to cover cost and, and not drive folks away from, from making purchases. If they're buying a $5 item and there's a $10 convenience fee, they're probably not gonna end up buying that item. So um, convenience fees, I'd say, do require probably a little bit more of a conversation just to, to see if it is something that you can do. And again, something we'd be happy to have that conversation around with you. So why has surcharging become a hot topic? Um, we touched on it a little bit earlier, just about really the, the increase in, in fees from processors, a lot of the big national processors between the mergers and the acquisitions and, and the um, kind of the, the desire to raise overall 
uh, revenue uh, for shareholders, raising fees, um, the shift from folks paying with cash and check to cards, driving up the volume and then shifting where, where the payments are coming from. So for a lot of small businesses that we talk to, um, credit card processing fees are, you know, in the top five or 10 of their biggest business expenses. Um, so there's an allure to having customers pay some or all of those fees. And I think that is, um, that is one of the reasons why it's become a hot topic. Um, in a time of inflation and economic uncertainty, a lot of you have probably had to raise your costs already. And you're kind of wondering, well, how much can I raise my costs already? Or maybe that margin that I already had built in for credit card processing fees is now being eaten away because my cost of goods have now gone up. So that's another reason why I think surcharging has become a hot topic. You know, I think really during the pandemic is where surcharging really started to um, take off. As I mentioned, I've been at Wind River 11 years. When I first started at Wind River, maybe had a couple conversations a year around surcharging. Now I'd say I'm having a couple conversations a week around surcharging. So, you know, it really started when, when many of us went to some of our local restaurants that we wanted to support during the pandemic, kind of worried about their future. Um, so they, it really started in the restaurant space. And I think a lot of processors in our industry kind of said, wait a minute, there's a way for processors to make more money, make relationships stickier if we push process surcharging on merchants. So it's really a way that a lot of the big national processors are using surcharging as a way to increase their margin. And we'll kind of talk on, especially with the debit cards and why they're still telling you to surcharge debit cards, even though the rules are very clear that you're not able to, why they're still pushing their merchants to do that. It really increases their margin. Um, we'll talk a little bit about the rules around surcharging. Um, one of the rules being that you can't charge more than your cost of acceptance. So really Wind River's approach has always been, what are you paying for credit card processing Here's what you should, should surcharge, not, hey, can we can we build in some extra fees and make more money off the backs of your customers? So when, when processors are calling about surcharging, usually it's kind of putting their best interests ahead of yours. So you have to really make sure um, that you're doing it in a way that's, that's going to be good for your business and your customers. So what are the rules? Um, the first we touched on kind of right away, only credit cards can be surcharged, no debit cards, no prepaid cards, no cash transactions. So only credit cards that, um, that can be surcharged. Surcharging, as I just mentioned, cannot exceed the cost of acceptance for credit card processing. Um, for years, the max surcharge was 4%. Last April, Visa made a change to go from 4% down to 3%. A lot of that change had to do with the fact that many processors were going out to the market saying, you know, here's a no fee processing program. We're going to surcharge your customers at 4% when, you know, maybe that merchant was paying two and a half percent. It was a way for that processor to really make an extra percent and a half margin on the backs of your customers. And Visa kind of said, no, that's not the spirit of why we're doing this. So last April, they actually lowered the surcharge maximum to 3%. Now, along with surcharging debit cards, we're still seeing a lot of programs out there at 35 or 4%. And at the end of the day, it's the business that, that is going to take the wrath of any punishment. So if you're in a program of 35 4%, again, that's something that's putting you out of scope, out of compliance, and potentially putting your business at risk of, of fines um, from the card brands. Proper signage um, is another thing. Um, having it at the point of entry, the point of sale, if you're a restaurant, having it on the menu. One, I think it's a rule too, I think just from a transparency standpoint, um, letting your customers know that there's going to be a surcharge ahead of time is always better than them getting to the checkout and finding it or finding it on their receipt after they leave. So again, another requirement is, is proper display that you are surcharging what that is and that it is credit card only. Um, surcharges must be broken out as a separate line item and again, needs to be a percentage. Um, so you'll have the total $100 surcharge, 3%, $3, grand total $103. So that again is a rule from the card brands. And if you surcharge one, you have to surcharge all. So um, you're not able to say, I'm gonna, I'm gonna surcharge 
Timmy, but I'm not going to surcharge Susie or I'm going to surcharge anything over $500, but nothing under 500. So it's really, if you're going to surcharge one, you have to surcharge all on credit card transactions. Again, not able to surcharge debit. So you are giving them an option if they want to avoid paying the customer or paying that customer surcharge um, by using debit card. So those are really, I'd say the five main rules that we see out there. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about what happens if you don't follow those rules? What are the regulations? What does the enforcement look like? Um, so first, the, the card brands, really at the end of the day, Visa, MasterCard, Discover, American Express, they make money when their customers use their cards in the form of interchange rates or some of those fees are going right back to the card brands. Surcharging is really pushing folks away from using credit cards in their mind. Um, so kind of as a way to protect their business, a way to protect their networks. Um, they do all have ways where a customer, uh, if they go into a business and they're incorrectly surcharged, um, they can report that business on a website. Um, now I'd say a lot of folks, what a lot of folks don't understand, consumers don't understand that there are fees for your business to accept credit cards. Um, a lot of folks don't know the rules around surcharging, but I'd say there are folks out there that do know them. And, and we have seen businesses that have been reported um, and have, have seen some financial penalties for doing things incorrectly. Uh, additionally, there's a network of secret shoppers. Um, processors get audited. I know Wind River was audited last year to ensure that our customers were all doing surcharging the correct way. Wind River passed that audit. I know there was other processors out there that were doing things incorrectly where they did not pass that audit and their customers, um, some of them got, got in some trouble. Um, so those are just some of the ways that the processors are trying to keep an eye on this and make sure people are following the, the rules. Um, a colleague of mine was at a conference late last year. I know Visa talked to think like their enforcement budget for 2024 was going to go up seven times from what it was in 2023. Again, kind of going back to that first point, um, Visa doesn't want folks, you know, if you surcharge five, six, seven percent or debit cards, people aren't going to use their cards. That ultimately hurts their business model. And again, it's the preferred paid me payment method for a lot of these consumers. So they just want to make sure that that folks aren't doing anything egregious to to kind of keep um, folks from using credit or debit cards. Um, so merchants that are found to be out of compliance with the card brand rules um, can face a, fines initially, um, and then it kind of goes on this thirty day schedule. If you still are doing things incorrectly after thirty days, that fine goes up. Another thirty days, that fine goes up again. You can get to the point where Visa or MasterCard Discover will not allow you to take their cards anymore if you continue to kind of break those surcharge rules. Um, fines can be as much as $50,000 for the first offense. Usually the first for small businesses, it's going to be in the $1,000 to $5,000 range. Visa is going to kind of give you, you know, an ultimatum, make it right. Or again, these fines are going to progressively get larger. So that is that is part of it. You know, we've seen some of these letters go out not just for surcharging, but for, for putting a, a, a flat fee or a, a convenience fee and doing that incorrectly, not listing, um, not listing that on, not listing that properly. So Visa is really ramping up the enforcement um, here in, in 2024. Um, so we talked a little bit earlier about why are some processors still pushing surcharging on debit cards? So Here's kind of an example of, of kind of why they are doing that and, and kind of what it looks like for them. So a Visa Rewards card, a lot of you probably have this in your wallet. This is when a, a Visa Rewards card is used in person um, at a store. So Visa charges 1.65% and 10 cents to accept that card. So on a $100 sale, that would be $1.75, leaving $1.25 margin if you were to surcharge at 3%. So a lot of processors, what they're doing is they're saying, we won't charge you any fees. We'll just keep that whole surcharge for ourselves. So they would make it, they'd be making about 125 basis points, which I'd say is probably on the upper end, if not a little out of the scope of what competitive pricing should be. Now, why, they're, why a lot of processors are still pushing you to surcharge debit cards, if we kind of go through that same exercise, 
you can see how much less expensive a debit card is to accept. And that's really why Visa is not going to allow you to surcharge those transactions. Instead of $1.75 on that $100, it's going to be 27 cents. So if your processor is having you surcharge debit, this debit card at 3% and keeping that 3% surcharge for themselves, they're making 2.73% on that. So, um, you know, you look, that's three, four, five times really what a competitive markup should be. So this is really helping those processors drive their um, drive their profitability while well, you're the one kind of holding the bag if one of your customers were to report you or you were to um, you were to get found to incorrectly surcharge. So again, that's why a lot of these processors are doing it, putting their best interest ahead of yours. And this is why um, debit cards aren't allowed to be surcharged. So I just kind of wanted to show a little bit of why um, and give some examples there. Um, so talking about potential benefits and drawbacks, um, I think the one we've talked about, it can potentially lower or eliminate credit card processing fees um, by passing those on to your customers. Um, I think there's also been an increase in, as I talked about, the number of conversations we've been having. I think as consumers, um, the number of businesses that we go to that we see are surcharging has also increased. So I think that we are seeing more of it in the market. Uh, it's not as unique as it used to be. Um, so I think those are a couple of the benefits of surcharging. Um, the drawbacks, I think a lot of times you think of that, that sale. So a customer's in there, they see a surcharge, they're going to pay it. I think a lot of folks are Midwest nice, they're going to do it. I've talked to a lot of folks, whether they're um, in professional network, personal network, partner network, where they say, I've gone somewhere, they surcharged, I'm not going to go back there again. And I think some of the stats here on um, some of these articles we have linked here, um, but 57% of consumers feel that surcharging should be illegal. I think some of that goes to folks don't understand that you as business owners have costs to accept cards. Um, and 70% of consumers have a negative view on businesses who surcharge. Um, you know, that could, I think surcharging can also result in lost or reduced sales when driving customers to your local competition or online competition. 40% of consumers highly likely to look for businesses that don't surcharge. You know, I think one example that I've given is, is I go to the Northwoods to help a buddy take his docs out every year. And, you know, if you go to a bar and it's cash only, we look in our wallets and if there's $20, divide $20 by how many beers we're going to get with what the tip is. And then we're going to go to the next bar. If we can throw down a credit card, we're going to be there for a while. We're going to order appetizers. We're going to spend more money. I think there's some of that too, where, um, if someone looks in their wallet, they don't want to pay the surcharge, they may not buy that next item or they may say, you know what, I'm going to go see what it costs on Amazon and, and buy it there and, and get the free shipping. And so you may recoup the costs on that initial sale, but are you potentially losing future sales or future business by, um, by a, adding a surcharge? Um, again, some of the tricky rules to navigate, being sure that you're doing things correctly is another drawback. Um, you're going to pay taxes on the total sale amount, including the surcharge. Um, and then again, as we talked about that example of, you know, folks are going to look in their wallet, see how much cash they have um, to avoid that surcharge or potentially not come back again. Um, so what are some things to think about um, if you're thinking of implementing a surcharge or if you are surcharging and then had some customer pushback? I think it's really, you know, how is it going to impact the customer experience? Each business is going to be different. Some businesses are, it's easier to get away with surcharging than others. Um, so not only will they pay the surcharge for that good and service, but will they come back again or will they spend more money? Um, can my processing solution decipher credit and debit cards? This is a big one in the industry right now. I know that the physical tabletop terminals that Wind River sells we can decipher based off of the bin number or the first six numbers in a credit or debit card, what type of card that is. If it is a debit card, it is not going to add that surcharge. That is pretty common with physical countertop credit card terminals. A lot of the software out there, the integrated payments options or even other solutions out there, they don't have the ability to decipher those bin numbers. And so what that means is it is on you to ask the customer when the card's not present, or to look at the card and see if it's, it says debit card on it when processing a transaction to avoid adding that surcharge. So that can become super tricky. 
that again is why a lot of folks are, are out of compliance. It's, it's not because they don't want to do the right thing. It's because their solution can't do the right thing. And again, Visa sees it as black and white. You're either doing it correctly or you're not doing it correctly. So that is another big thing to think about um, when potentially implementing surcharging. Um, what is the current credit and debit card mix of your business? If 70 or 80% of your customers are already paying with debit cards, you're not going to be able to surcharge that. And the 3% that you're paying on um, credit cards isn't going to cover those total fees. Another thing, another bullet point down here further is a lot of times when you start surcharging, your mix may be 50-50 credit and debit cards. Well, when people see that 3% surcharge, that mix is going to become higher in debit cards because people are looking to avoid that surcharge. So, um, so a lot of times in those cases, less and less of, of what you can cover is going to um, is going to be able to be surcharged. That's why I think cash discounting, again, gets you out of those rules. If you're able to raise your prices and offer a discount um, that way, you can you can still kind of cover it that way. Um, what is your competition doing? I'd say if if every other restaurant in town is surcharging and you start surcharging, you're going to be right along with them. The opposite could be said if you're the first one to surcharge and no one else is surcharging, you could potentially be driving your customers um, to to your competition. Um, what is the average ticket size of your business? You know, I think a, a three percent surcharge on a three dollar cup of coffee is a lot different than. Uh, you know, if you're a, a big ticket item, if you're selling something for 10, 15, $20,000, adding that fee on um, at that point, that fee is going to be significantly higher um, and, and could potentially um, could potentially cost you a sale because of that high surcharge or cost you repeat business. Um, and then, you know, there is a cost to accepting cash and checks, um, you know, making sure that you have change, make sure that you give the right change, running it to the bank, seeing if the checks are bad, if you've had issues with that. Um, so I know there's there's maybe no uh, no hard cost to accepting those, but there definitely are some soft costs. Um, so just really kind of understanding what those costs are. Would you rather take a credit card without a surcharge than some of those costs for accepting cash or check? Um, so really, I think really when, when you know, again, to reiterate, just weighing the pros and cons um, for your individual business, every business is is unique. Um, so there's there's no silver bullet. There's no right answer. Um, we just kind of wanted to give you these these guidelines and things to think about for your business. Um, what are the impacts of, of the processing fees on taxes? Um, depending on how your processor has set you up to surcharge, if it's you process $100, surcharge $3, the processor keeps the $3 and you get the $100, then you have kind of quote unquote, no processing fees. You're not able to write that off as a business expense. With Wind River, you process $100 sale, $3 surcharge, you get $103 put into your bank account. And then from there, um, we would take the fees out. So you would have that business expense. You would be able to write that off as a, um, as a expense line. Um, again, be cautious of some of those financial impacts that come with non-compliance. Um, and I think just always as a consumer, just being transparent with your customers, if you are going to surcharge, um, making sure that you're, you're letting them know that you're going to do that and, and not having it be a surprise for them. Um, so with that being said, I'm going to open it up for questions here. Um, I think there is a couple um, couple questions that we have already. Um, the first one is, do I need to refund the surcharge on a return? Um, that answer to that question is yes. Um, so uh, maybe a two-part answer. One, if, if it's a $100 sale and someone returns that item, it'd be the $100 plus $3. They would be refer, they would be refunded that um that full three dollars now let's say it was a thousand dollar sale and they only were returning or you owed them a hundred dollars back you would only off you'd only refund that three percent on what that refund amount would be so that's really kind of how that would um that would be um the next question here we offer our products at a commercial discounted rate based on volume with transactions often exceeding ten thousand dollars 
However, the credit card fees associated with the sales significantly impact our bottom line as an energy company. Is it feasible for us to apply a surcharge solely on those high volume customers? So that kind of goes back to the um, kind of the rules, surcharge one, surcharge all. If you are going to surcharge, you do need to do it on all transactions, not just based on, um, on the size of the transaction. So Paul, if, if you do want to connect offline, there's some other things maybe we could talk about um, where we could, we could potentially um, look at some options or understand the business a little bit better and maybe give you our, um, our advice on what might make sense. Any other questions? And if not, um, I know a lot of times after these webinars, folks will just email me directly um, or call me directly. Here is my contact information, uh, whether it is a question on surcharging, credit card processing in general, um, your specific program, anything, please don't hesitate to call. I know a lot of you folks found us through the Wisconsin Independent Businesses um, or, or potentially through one of our, our network of community bank partners. Um, so again, we just want to be a resource for those businesses in Wisconsin. So if I can help in any way, if you have feedback, if there's future things you'd like to see us discuss in one of these webinars, uh, please let us know. Um, we're always open to, to feedback or, or ideas, um, that are going to help in the market. Um, we had one question here, um, from Jamie about, um, Connecticut and Massachusetts not allowing surcharging. Um, it is where the business is located, not where the customer is located. So um, if you are a Wisconsin business and you're shipping to those states, the the sale is being made here in Wisconsin. I don't maybe virtually, but that is how the that is how that works. Um, that being said, if there's no other questions, I really appreciate uh, everyone's attendance today. Hope you have a good day. It looks like the sun's maybe trying to sneak out here in Madison. So hopefully it's not as rainy where you guys are. But again, thanks for thanks for joining us today. And, and please let myself or Wind River know how we can be a resource down the line. So thanks, everybody. Have a great day.